For his invaluable contributions and service to Indian education, Professor Rajaraman has been recognized with India's leading academic, research and civilian honors including the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Prize, the Homi Bhabha Prize and the Padma Bhushan. Thank you Professor uh, Rajaraman for inviting us to your home and Thank joining you. us in this conversation today. Thank you for the nice introduction. So let's begin at the beginning. Uh, you joined IITK in 1963 right. uh, while it was still operating from makeshift facilities at the Har Harcourt Butler Technological Institute. Right. What at attracted you to IITK at the time and did you have apprehensions coming from a large and established university like the University of Wisconsin at Madison to an upstart institute uh, that IITK was at the time? Well, uh, I had decided at the end of my PhD at the Institute of at the University of Wisconsin, uh, I was offered a assistant professor's position in the Department of Statistic, Statistics in the university. And um, in those days, you are allowed 18 months practical training after your uh, education. So I, I joined, but I was clear in my mind that I wouldn't settle in the US. Um, various reasons, including that I thought I wouldn't fit in in that uh, environment. And um, so at the end of one year, my um, stay at the Department of Statistics, uh, I decided to come back to India and um, made a mistake of not uh, getting a job before leaving. Mm -hmm. I was uh, cocky and overconfident. Mm -hmm. And I said that uh, with all my education and so on, people will welcome me with a with an open arms. Mm -hmm. So I came back in November of 1963, no, 62, I returned to uh, India. And uh, I wrote uh, letters to various IITs, giving my biodata and saying, I'd like to have a position. Mm -hmm. And each IIT reacted differently. The only IIT which was somewhat uh, welcoming was IIT Kanpur, mm -hmm. which uh, asked me to come and give a seminar. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, the Kanpur IIT was in SBTI. And uh, after I, I came back in November, and um, the invitation came in December to mm -hmm. uh, come and give a seminar. I went to IIT K, and uh, there are about uh, uh, Professor Kelker was there, and uh, Professor Mathana was there, and some of the American professors had already joined. Uh, there was Arthur Gill was the, in the electrical engineering department, mm -hmm. and uh, then there are about four, about six or seven professors of the institute. Professor Mahanti was there, Peter Narasimhan was there, mm -hmm. and so I gave this seminar to about 20, 25 people, and. Uh, in those days, of course, you had that slides, 35 centimeter, millimeter, mm -hmm. <laughs> 35 mm -hmm. uh, millimeter slides, and um, showed, talk, talked about my research work which I had done. And uh, then I returned back to Delhi where I was staying, and um, waited, mm -hmm. and waited. <laughs> and uh, after about a month or so, uh, they said they had, they had to have a, a Selection Committee, Statutory Selection Committee, because I was already in India. Mm -hmm. If I were abroad, mm -hmm. they could have offered me without any interview. Mm -hmm. But uh, because I was in India, I had to be interviewed. Yeah. So I waited, and um, sometime in, uh, I think, uh, end of January, I got an interview letter. I went to the 
HBTI campus, mm -hmm. and there is a interviewed by about 15 people, mm -hmm. <laughs> including the uh, Professor Naraman Dahl, who was the uh, leader of the KIA program, mm -hmm. and of course uh, all the uh, apart from uh, in the, the statutory committee which is there mm -hmm. has uh, people from other, other places. Mm -hmm. I distinctly remember Mr. F.C. Kohli was there as mm -hmm. one of the uh, people who interviewed mm -hmm. me. And um, so after interview, uh, they don't tell you what, what happened. Mm -hmm. So I go back and wait mm -hmm. and wait and wait. And March, I got a letter mm -hmm. saying that you are selected. Mm -hmm. You may join whenever mm -hmm. you want. So. Pronto, I joined. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so you weren't apprehensive in part because nobody else was offering you at the time, yeah. uh, which nobody I guess was, they discovered to uh, their regret later no, in I life. But if I had waited, mm -hmm. probably I would have been able to get into some other mm -hmm. IIT. Mm -hmm. But uh, IIT had a lot of promise. Mm -hmm. um, one of the main promises was that it is up and coming new, and uh, can be a person who can make a difference to the institute. Mm -hmm. And um, the fact that uh, Americans are already there. Mm -hmm. And um, as I said, the only, only institute which cared to call you for, call me for a seminar. Mm -hmm. Other places are not very interested. They said, wait for an advertisement to the paper mm -hmm. and apply for that, apply mm -hmm. for it. And then you'll be interviewed in due course. So IIT Kanpur acquired its first computer, the IBM 1620, in August 1963. It, its transportation on a bullock cart uh, to the campus <laughs> and installation yeah, in the Western Lab is, <laughs> is legendary, yeah, actually, right. almost. Uh, talk to us about you know that experience uh, and yeah, what I, happened then. I was in the electrical engineering department at that time. Mm -hmm. There is no computer center, and uh, I remember distinctly the a cart coming hmm. to the uh, back side of the Western Lab building. Hmm. And um, they found that the machine was too large hmm. to transport it through the main door. Hmm. So they had to break the wall, back side wall hmm. of the uh, uh, Western Lab. Hmm. And after breaking the wall, the machine was moved in hmm. and the wall was put in again. Hmm. again. Hmm. And uh, they had to air condition the, the room and uh, that was a quite a headache at that time uh, because uh, with the rains the water was flooding into that room and um, uh, but you know it, uh, uh, the entire installation was done by the IBM's uh, local engineers mm -hmm. uh, but it was supervised by the three people who came with the machine the husky was the leader of the team from the foreman acton and was a numerical analyst and uh, Rabinovich was a systems programmer. So these three people formed a team, mm -hmm. core team, mm -hmm. which uh, set up the computer. So why, why did they need to use a bullock cart? I assume it came from elsewhere on some uh, regular transport, it, right? No, it came by plane, mm -hmm. and the plane landed in Chakeri mm -hmm. airport. Mm -hmm. um, the reason they used a bullock cart is that they put pneumatic tires mm -hmm. on their bullock carts mm -hmm. so that uh, the machine will not shake mm -hmm. too much. If it shakes too much, mm -hmm. they are afraid that the circuits will give up. Mm -hmm. So they put it in a, they, they thought about a truck, mm -hmm. but then they thought a truck will be too rash. Roads of Kanpur mm -hmm. are not good enough. Yeah. And uh, particularly the road from Chakeri mm -hmm. was not very good. Yeah. And uh, so they thought, they thought that bringing it slowly on a bullet cart with the pneumatic tires mm -hmm. will not shake the machine too okay. much. Okay. And that is the reason. If you can speak on computer science education going forward, you know, with all these dramatic changes that are taking place. Well, um, AI is going to have a serious impact in computing. By and large, computing education is going to seep into every area. So you, you just cannot have, you, you can't be called fully educated unless you have a reasonable knowledge about computers and their role mm -hmm. and how they work and what their impact would be and so on. So apart from academics in computing, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the, the fact that it becomes a part and parcel 
of, of our life should make people aware of its uh, drawbacks, advantages, and so on. Mm -hmm. So um, I see a bright future for uh, computing education and research in that area. And um, also more and more people are going to get into that area. But th so we are talking at one level of computers basically penetrating all aspects right. of human life and therefore, you know, if you are in biomed engineering, you are also dealing with that subject. What about specialized computer science education? What role will that have then? Specialized computer education is, you know, after all, mm -hmm. tools, tools are generated mm -hmm. or made mm -hmm. by computer scientists. Mm -hmm. So new, newer and better tools, mm -hmm. both in software and hardware. In fact, you know, the, the fact that you got very um, uh, high capacity mm -hmm. processors that you can put in the pocket mm -hmm. means that somebody has designed that. So that is designed by computer scientists. Mm -hmm. Like every gadget you have has some computer built in. Every motor car has got about 15 microprocessors in them. So everything is controlled. With new electric cars coming in, the entire car industry is going to be transformed mm -hmm. by uh, both what software goes into it and what hardware goes into it. You know, people have to know how to design both the hardware and software. And that education has got to be specialized. Mm -hmm. Apart from the uh, education on how to use it effectively and responsibly. So I guess, you know, I'm in a field called journalism. Uh, and I guess, you know, we have AI that is now churning out articles. Uh, yeah. I'm reading stories on a daily basis of how paralegals may no longer be relevant because right. it can do a lot of those functions. So is there something about AI also that will impact computer education and computer science itself? Because a lot of coding and all can also be done by this AI. Yes. So I mean, are we also seeing perhaps there, an there is going to be a There is going to be a shift, definitely. There is going to be a shift. Uh, um, just like when computers came, there's a shift. Uh, and that shift is uh, hopefully going to be make life better than worse. Mm -hmm. And um, when the first, uh, uh, the most interesting example I normally give is the uh, arrival of the railway reservation system in India. Before that, everything was manual. And there was one clerk who was uh, having a ledger and you, you couldn't book a ticket from say, Kanpur to uh, uh, Bangalore. Uh, before, unless you know a telegram is sent to bomb Chennai and another let another telegram is, comes back from Chennai before you know you have a seat it takes ten days okay and when the uh, first computers came for reservation people were worried that these clerks will be put out of jobs but what was found was that the number of jobs increased because instead of having one reservation office now they had several reservation offices. And uh, so many more clerks were employed. And it's a lot more convenient to people. So it actually changed the mindset of people, saying it doesn't really eliminate employment, but actually creates employment. And also improves the convenience of people. Of course, now you can work from home, the coming of the internet and so on. Uh, may, may have made those clerks redundant. You don't anymore go to a, a reservation counter to do it from home. Mm -hmm. But that has changed in a different way. So people are employed now in creating that software. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the nature of employment has changed. So the nature of education has changed. People have to be better educated. And uh, they got to start specializing and uh, be definitely better than machines. So I guess my last question to you would be, is there something that we have missed that you think is important in terms of uh, on computer science education and your relationship with IIT Kanpur? Not really. Only thing which I would like to mention is that the, my period of 20 years at Kanpur IIT was my most uh, memorable because um, there is a time uh, things grew from nothing to a, to a status where uh, IITK counted as an institution, okay? 
the only negative aspect of IIT Kanpur's development was that the attention which was paid to faculty development, student development was not paid to support staff development. So, support staff became restive and that led to problems like strikes and shouting and all that and disturbing classes and uh, if we had paid a little bit more attention to the non-academic staff that we paid to the academic staff and the academics, maybe Kanpur would have grown in a better way. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rajaman, for joining us on IIT con Conversations.